Our lives have taken different paths while driven by the same passion. From deep commitment in the Sierra Mountains to a life lived simply, experiencing a unique connection with the world around us. Carving the changing landscape of our own playground and a first flight leading to a massively life-changing experience. Uprooting and replanting in the middle of the Pacific in search of a certain image, or disconnecting from the foundation of home and living on the road and in the air. This passion we share is a life in pursuit of flight. The ability to start a day before it begins and still an hour to myself excites me. To live in an environment that allows us is essential. It quietens down my thoughts and allows me to focus on my day. Flying with no set plan, objective or destination allows me to escape, for want of a better word, control. Wanaka as a place is becoming busier and busier because of its natural beauty, I guess. And working in tourism, this is super good for us. We get to help others create lifelong memories and we also get to make a living out of it. But when work is over, there's so much room for us, ourselves, to escape to a place that we can't be found and create memories of our own. Well, some people only come for a day or two and never forget the place. There's those of us that have chosen to call Wanaka home. I feel like everyone has an image of Hawaii. These islands have their own speed, their own mood, an occasional rush hour, but of course, abundant golden hours. That is why I'm here. Being able to, to change my element in a short period of time is what, for me, makes home special. If I want to change my mood, I just change my element. Having access to the air continues to surprise me. I imagine it does the same for the people watching from the ground. Always wondering what they see, what they feel when I get close by and play. I think for a second that they're flying too. Free flying is, in certain way, just an illusion. But they don't see what I see. I feel driven to fly farther, to find new lines, to reach a new corner, and to wait. <laughs> 
for that special moment to happen so I can capture this visual illusion and bring it back to Earth. This is my image of Hawaii. I gain a lot of inspiration here in the Sierra through wanting to explore out alone in the mountains of California. I like to engage in multi-day long adventures while being self-sufficient and taking all of my own equipment with me. We don't even have a word for it in English because it's so uncommon, but in French it's called vol biv, which means flight camping. It's taken me many years of flying the Sierra to kind of develop that pattern of, of when to fly, how to fly, when to push, when to pull back. You're finding thermals at two to 3,000 feet per minute climb rates. So in the matter of one minute, you've climbed higher than the face of El Capitan. difficult, it's, it's remote, you fly over some of the most dense, rugged peaks that we have. It's extremely rewarding, but it also makes me feel very small in a good way to be out in the big mountains and to be all alone on my paraglider. I've grown up here and lived here my entire life, so I don't fly with any navigation or maps or any types of devices that tells me where I'm at. The map that I carry with me, I carry in my head. Just imagine yourself at 17,000 feet over the Sierra under building cumulus clouds, thinking about which peak you're gonna top land at for the night, which lake you're gonna fish at, and where you're gonna relaunch the next day. It's just an inexplicable feeling that I get, and it's beautiful. Being out here and learning about myself and learning about the mountains is, is just as an important experience as being successful. And at the end of the day, you can sit back in your tent and look around at the scenery and realize that you just did something amazing today and that tomorrow hopefully will be even better. And that feeling that you get is just pure content. It just makes me happy. No big explanation needed, it's just, being content. I grew up uh, 30 kilometers north of Tokyo. I love at night to go to party, dancing, shopping, and uh, I hate sun and uh, no sports. But one day my father asked me to go to fly. And uh, I don't know, fly, what is fly? And he told me paragliding. From beginning, I didn't want to start paragliding because it uh, sounds like mountain sports, which I have to bring a heavy material and walking in the mountain. And uh, I hate these kind of things. But then, I don't know, life is strange. I saw the ambience of the community. They are always used to eat together, they cook together, they drink together. And that was the main thing that I wanted to do, not paragliding. <laughs> After I started paragliding, my life completely changed. When I was young, my nickname was Miss Hawaii. Professor always called me Hi, Miss Hawaii because I asked why, why, why. Paragliding frees my curiosity. And my first curiosity was acro. I asked the instructor and he said, Seiko, they are crazy. 
so don't follow it. What? No, it's not crazy, it's great. Then I said, you know, they have two hands and two foot, two eyes and one head, and me too, so I can do it. For me, no is no option, and uh, there's something to do, and I cannot just wait for this. Uh, if we want, if we work for it, there's always a solution. First, I came to Annecy. I was a acro pilot, so I didn't know anything about the site. And then I switched to cross country flight, and then it's a day by day. My area started to be bigger and bigger. I thought this cross country flight is boring, but it was not true. I learned little by little, and then there no nothing to feel boring. I don't feel. A fear, and I don't feel any stress because I got many things from uh, everywhere to be this uh, level. Now I want to enjoy and share with uh, other pilot, and I think this is maybe Japanese spirit. We don't like only taking, taking, taking. If I taking, I will go back. I want to fly very, very, very far away, more than any human. I want to fly. Like uh, I call this like a god level, level level of god. It's like not human, and nobody can tell me no. It was like a dream to find a place like this, close to the forest, no neighbor, nice view, love it. And uh, it's only 20 minutes from Chamonix. It was kind of natural to grow up here because uh, I know only Chamonix. It's more later now that I, I, I said, okay, that was a really nice life to grow up in Chamonix. It's like a Disneyland of every sport. We can say extreme sport. I don't like too much this word because extreme is too close to the limit. Sometimes I, for, I forget that it's crazy life here. My parents are ski instructor, mountain guide, what else can I do? And then my dad started in paragliding and I wanted to learn. When I was 15, I started to fly. I'm flying for a long time, 20 years now, which is well, when I say it, I'm like, wow, 20 years now. What is good in, in flying is that you can't see anything. Maybe if, if, we, uh, if we were able to see the, the, the aerology with colors, we would not go to fly. It would be too frightening, like it's going in every direction. But uh, yeah, try to feel something which is invis in invisible. You're building something in your mind, like what's happening around you, like this. When I started to, um, to fly more, I wanted to do acro. Acro, acro, acro. I said, oh, okay, there's always something to, uh, to, uh, to imagine, something new, some different things you can do. I think in every sport I've done is what I uh, was uh, loving, is learning. I can learn all my life. That's what I love, like pushing myself. I feel that I forget everything bad in my life or like, oh, I have to, to work this afternoon. I don't think about it if I'm flying in the morning. I try to um, never be upset of what I do. The typical day will depend how much work I have. I really like this job because it's 99% of smile, of people happy to fly. You're flying with people they never, they never flew before, but then you're also flying with your friend close to you, and sometimes you just, it feels like you're just flying with your friends. But it's having fun in the job. I really like also to go to, uh, to Bain, do Waga. It's easy, you can start late at four, you finish the tandems. It's still good till six, seven in the evening. I like to go alone also. It's a good connection with the nature. You're more focused in what's happening around you. Yeah, the spirit is different. There's less goal in this type of flying, I think. Every second you will, uh, you will choose what you want to do. It's just uh, playing with the elements. I don't know, I like to fly. That's all, I like to fly. 
It's easy to be in Chamonix because really fast I can go and have fun and come back to my family. I want to, uh, to, keep, to keep living this life because it's nice. I have it in me since I think I was a kid. My happiness comes from the sensation of freedom. I don't like anything what, uh, what limits me. Paramotor has, for me, always had this element of, of freedom. To have a small aircraft in a van, ready to fly, not only gets you to the places you would normally not see, but it also makes a special connection with people. I have to admit that I, I still didn't build inside me the need of settling down. I always live in a way that I'm ready to move, really. I don't own the house. I don't own the land. I don't have a mortgage. I don't have anything that would attach me to the certain location. Since I fly Paramoto, uh, it was direct connection to start living in a van and traveling. It becomes a lifestyle. It becomes the way I wake up every day. With a Paramoto, when, when I'm flying by myself, traveling by myself, I had a, lots of different kind of and sort of adventures. New experiences and new people and new, new places. And there is a reason for it why I travel by myself. Sometimes it's not because I am super unsocial or I don't like people. It's because I learn that I make different connections with people when I am by myself. And I think the paramotor helps. I think, I know that paramotor helps with it. It pushed me to meet people and to talk to them and to introduce myself and to also tell them a story, what I'm doing and why. And I met a lot of people that way in my life who, uh, for, for whom it was an inspiration. I always have this feeling that there is too many interesting things to do in general in the world while you are alive to just sit still and waiting for something. If you want something to happen, you, can make, you have to make it happen. I cannot do a normal tourist stuff. I have to travel with a motor. If I don't have a motor, I need a motorbike. You jump a motorbike, you go wherever you want. So I associate it with freedom as well. Recently, uh, I had a really, really nice two weeks on a motorbike in India. 1,700 kilometers through the highest passes in Himalayas. We were all riding a classic Royal Enfields Bullet 500. And it was one of the, also the most incredible things I did in my life. Maybe a home for me is more like a state of mind where I just feel comfortable. I, I feel peaceful. Wherever I take it, it's with me. All about Paramotor is to go and see the places from above, because you see them from the perspective not really many people have the opportunity to see it. There is no money in the world you can pay me monthly to put me in the office. I find freedom in motion.
inspired by nature, driven by the elements. Our paths are diverse, like us. Our passion for flight brings us together.